Hi, this is Business with Dave. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you how you could make your street food store awesome and how you could maximize sales in a couple of these points. So the first point is to own your food. So do choose one or two things or one or two dishes that you could do really, really well and that you know it is delicious and it will sell. Create a reputation for yourself. You don't want to be doing too much because then it will just be too general and people won't know what you are. You want to do something really well. So if you do want to do curries, do curries, sushi, do sushi. Don't try to blend the two together. Just do something amazing. Do something authentic and traditional and people will come to you. So the second point is to keep it short and simple. So like the menu, you don't want to make it too complicated. So a couple of choices, maybe like three, four choices, which is really good. You can make in front of the customers and they can see and that you can be known for what it is. Particularly about your store as well, simple branding. You don't make it too complicated as long as you sort of carve out a sort of marketing sort of image and reputation, then you're good to go in that sense as well. And then or more or less it is, is you want to present your food well and hopefully people will come to you. All of that could be done with minimal cost. Uh, it just takes a little bit of creativity on your part to think about it, but overall, a good way to start if you do want to start a market store food business. So fresh and homemade always sells. Literally, if you're making something there, people will love to buy from you just because visually is really good. Uh, really attractive and you're giving that customer the experience of you actually making the food out front. Particularly if it's freshly made as well with fresh ingredients. People love that healthy feel to it, healthy street food and everyone loves that kind of stuff. Particularly if you're making it to order for them. So do bear that in mind whatever you do choose in terms of cuisine or dishes. So make sure you keep the prices at an affordable range. So you don't want to be too high that it's more of a luxury good and you don't want it to be too low that the perceived value might be kind of low and the quality might be low. You want a nice mid-range, be able to compete with everyone else, but you want to be offering the best food, the freshest food, made to order as well, or just quick speed, and just carve out that sort of niche for yourself and then people will come to you, no doubt, particularly with the price as well. Also, if you do offer some extras as well, so some extra pickles, some fries, and stuff like that on the side, that could add an extra pound to three pounds to on top of your already main offering. So do consider that as well. So make sure the flavors are different and that you're serving consistently. So important, flavors key. If it doesn't taste good, no one's gonna come back to you. If it's bland, no one's gonna come back to you. But they will come back to you if it's delicious, if it's flavorful, you got the colors, you got the flavors and seasoning as well. Make sure you get the food right because that is exactly why people come back to you for especially about consistency as well. If you're serving inconsistent food that it tastes good one time, it doesn't taste good another time, people won't come back to you. People won't tell friends about you. But as long as you get that consistency and quality right throughout, then you are all good because then they can tell their friends and family about you and then you know for sure that whenever you go there, you'll be getting the same quality food every single time. So do consider how you want to serve to your customers. So whether you're cooking the food there, made to order, or whether you're having it hot hold, so then you're keeping it in a bamboo and then you can be serving customers in that way. Obviously, lots of pros and cons to each of them. Briefly saying the pros and cons for hot hold is that once you cook everything, then you just serve people really quickly because you're more or less assembling everything. But if you're making it to order, it does take a bit longer, but at least customers can see you cooking their meals up fresh and that they, that draws in people as well, particularly if you're cooking in front of them. The smells go everywhere, the visually is very good and, as lo and you'll be able to charge hopefully a higher price with that as well. Obviously hot hold, amazing. You can serve really quickly so you can get through as many sales as you can. You don't have to tailor the prices too high because you could sort of tailor to medium to low so you get more sales in. So if you want to focus on volumes, that is great. And stuff like stews and curries, they can't be cooked to order. You want it to be flavorful and it needs to be last. You need it to cook over time, flavors to develop. So stuff like curries and stuff will need time and it fits hot hold a lot better than if you're cooking the curry to order. So do consider that when you do decide whatever you don't want to do. So maximize your sales with speed, staffing, and precision. 
if you don't have all three, then that might be a bit of a problem because what you want to do is you want to maximize the time that you're actually selling because you might only have three, four hours and you need to make sure you're fully staffed so then if there's customers coming, they don't have to wait too long and that you can get through everyone as quick as they can. Precision in a sense that you don't want to be making orders wrong, you don't want to be food wasting, so you want to make sure you're getting each order correct every time and getting those orders out to customers. Especially when you need to consider speed as well, you want to make sure you're getting as quick as possible so customers can be in and out in a matter of 30 seconds to a minute and then you could be charging customers like that. So draw customers in with samples. Everyone loves free stuff. Who doesn't like a free taster and particularly those that will draw people in? That's the aim. You want to draw customers in and give them a try and then hopefully they can make an informed decision that yes, your food tastes great. Yes, I am going to come buy from you because they've really tasted. But if you don't give them a taster, then you trust them to hopefully know what you're serving and hopefully know that your food is good and that they will come and spend money. So destroy, cut that in half give the customers all the choices that they can by giving them your sample and it doesn't cost a lot, just a little piece of meat or a bit of tofu or whatever you're offering just to give them a taster and they will come back for more and I'll probably say one out of four samples you'll probably get a customer and that's pretty good odds if you're in a busy market store as well. Make your food Instagram worthy, so literally make your food look pretty, make sure it looks good because when you're in a market store environment you are competing with not just people in that market, you're competing with all the market stores around selling different types of food in London or wherever city you are at. So you want to make sure your food is Instagram worthy, that it will make people want to take pictures of it, put it in their social media and that could spread like wildfire and hopefully they'll come to that particular market for your particular food and that they'll look out for you hopefully. So that is the hope because that's the aim. You can rely on that market particularly to draw in customers because those markets will always draw in customers if you have a good range of stores. But in order to attract more people and particularly come to your market store, you want to make sure your food looks great and that it will look great in photo too. So do make sure it looks attractive. A bonus tip as well is that you don't need to have all the fancy cameras to be able to do Instagram worthy fake pictures, just use your phone, use whatever's convenient to you and just put it on social media and just connect with customers and they could hopefully find you via your photos or via people's recommendations. So last point is to be on social media, so stuff like Twitter, Instagram, maybe Facebook as well, sometimes Snapchat, be on those social media platforms just so you can post up updates on your food, your information, your details, where you are going to be at stay connected with customers hopefully how you could have a website as well so that you could put down what you sell uh, where you're going to be located when you're opening just stuff like that that is so important that people are craving your food they want to know when they could have it at what time and when you're going to be serving and for you to keep up to date that's keeping your customers informed that's keeping your customers happy that they know where to find you and it's so important because everyone's looking online nowadays click something if you want fish and chips, click on it and then so many pop up. You want to make sure you're standing out and to be relevant, do be on social media. It's all free. You don't have to spend money on it and you can get it all professionally done as well. If you do want, if you have the extra disposable income, but do be online, definitely worthwhile for any business. Thanks for watching this video guys. Hopefully you found this video useful and that you can apply some of these tips and advice into your existing market store business or if you do want to start your own street food business do consider some of these into your plans as well uh, if you like this video like this video and consider subscribing to the channel we'd love to see you subscribe to the channel and i've been business with dave i will see you in the next video bye